Hi, when I first installed this plugin and put it on a vocal track, I couldn't hear it, so I thought it was broken already. But then I turned it off, and then I noticed the difference. Now to me, that's a sign of a very good reverb. So let's have a look at the Taylor Raum machine. Let's go. Now I have to say right away, before you only watch part of this video and then move on to other ones, make sure to stick around to the end because there's a little catch to this plugin that you may want to know if you're thinking of buying it. But let's now check out the website. So we're talking about the Taylor Raum machine today, which is a reverb plugin. And the Raum machine brings the legendary algorithm of our tube reverb, the Raum Zeit machine, as a plugin directly into your door. So if we check out the Raum Zeit machine, then you can see it's an actual hardware module with tubes in the analog path. And it brings a unique kind of reverb, which is achieved through a combination of digital and analog components. There is of course a processor that calculates the reverbs and this is enriched by the typical analog sound of the Taylor devices. Now, if you want to buy this reverb, it's quite costly. It costs almost 2,700 euros probably comparable in dollars and currently it's even out of stock and you can only use one instance at a time, of course, but that's different for the plugin. And what they're saying is that this plugin contains the same algorithm as the tube reverb. Obviously a plugin cannot contain tubes. I don't know whether they're actually emulating the tubes as well in this plugin. They're not talking very specific about what's in the plugin and what's not when you compare it to the hardware. And I'm also not going to compare it to the hardware in this video because I don't have the hardware. But I am very interested to listen to what this algorithm sounds like and how it compares to some of my other favorite reverb plugins. Now there's a lot of marketing speak here. Imagine your melodies floating gently through the room. It's very versatile in that it mimics also creative spaces like a cathedral or a futuristic spaceship. And it promises that with our RAW machine, you will experience the world of music in a whole new way. So that's quite a challenge. Now I didn't come across many YouTube videos on this plugin yet, just the Taylor ones, which are these two. It's available in the usual plugin formats. You can download a Mac version or a Windows version at the moment, 106. And the current price is 99 euros, but they had a pre-sale of 59 euros. And that was quite a thing because they announced that they would have a plugin, but they called it a black box at the time. So you didn't know which plugin you were actually buying, but it was a lot cheaper than it is now. And when they announced it was a reverb, they still offered it at a discounted price of 79 euros, which is when I bought it. And right now after release it's 99 euros. So let's have a look at this in Cubase. So this is a project that I often use to compare a lot of my favorite reverbs. So let's bring up the round machine and let's have a quick first listen and look at the controls that it contains. The track that I'm currently using for this demo is a vocal of the song 500 miles by my band Wash recorded by Perfect Sounds Unleashed. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. So you have an input control over here. There's a pre-delay, which delays the onset of the reverb after the original signal. So you can get a bit of separation. Those are pretty standard. So let's have a first listen at what this density control does. We just drove 500 miles. We just drove 500 miles. Yeah, pretty dense. There's a bypass button. Next control is the size which I assume is the size of the room. I say assume because I didn't find a manual anywhere for this plugin at the moment, but it would figure that size is the size of the emulated room. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. Yeah, and it does seem to resemble size. Decay, which is the time that the reverb falls below a certain level. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It goes on forever. The mix knob, and because I'm currently using it as a send, it's set to 10. And an output level knob. There's also a power button, which doesn't seem to do anything at the moment. Now there's also a right click menu on the plugin, where you can set the size of the plugin. I had it to medium. You can search for an update, which at the moment I don't think it does anything. At least it doesn't give any feedback. Maybe if there's no feedback, there is no update. There's an about box showing that I'm currently running the 10006 version. 
and you can go to the website to the page that I just started the video with. Now, if you click on this little cogwheel over here, you get a preset management system where they have lots of presets from rooms in Berlin, apparently. Kreuzberg, Reichstag, Teufelsberg, U-Bahn, which is a subway. They have specific drum presets, guitar presets, stuff from the main mix, and since we're on a vocal, let's try out some of these vocal presets here. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. Deep vocal. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run. Vocal hall, maybe. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Now let's try some of the more esoteric Berlin rooms. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. What does the subway sound like? We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. Now we'll try it out with some more subtle ambient presets later in another project, so stick around for that. But let's now compare it on a vocal to two of my other favorite plugins for vocal reverb, the Eventide SP2016 and the Quantum Evolution. And by the way, you can download exports of this audio yourself with the link below in the description, so you can have a more detailed listen. So let's start with the Eventide. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. We just drove 500 miles. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's crazy. So what do you think? Are these comparable? I'll give my conclusion at the end. Let's now have a look at the performance. Now I had to do the performance test a little bit different from how I would usually do it, because usually I would just put individual plugin instances on the audio track. But more about that later, why I didn't do that in this case. In this case, I have 32 audio tracks over here, and I have 32 instances of RAW machine as well. And every vocal track is basically sending to a different RAW machine instance. Now I don't know if you looked at the performance meter already, but it barely registers. And this is basically what this meter already registered when I just had one instance installed. So the performance is really, really good. I don't think I have any other reverb plugin which registers this low in performance. So that's definitely a great job. Now going from that great job to what is a bit of an elephant in the room at the moment, because there are definitely some things with this plugin that can stand to be improved. The first thing that I ran into is when I installed the plugin, it seems that the installer program has not been certified for Windows. Because I got a warning on first running the installer, don't run this plugin, Windows Defender said, because we're not sure it's safe. So I had to override that to still be able to install this plugin. And I think it's because it has just not been properly certified for Windows installation. Second thing when I noticed is when I put this plugin on the insert of an audio track directly, so not on a send effects track, but directly on an audio track, Cubase quits. Without any warning, it just vanishes. Now I've never had that before with this version of Cubase, so I assume it's because of this plugin that I put on an audio track. And that's also why I couldn't do my performance measurements in the way I usually do it. So the plugin currently only seems to be working correctly when you put it on an effects track and use it as a send effect. Now I'll also link a Gearspace forum thread in the description below, because other users of this early version of this plugin have been experiencing some other problems as well. For example, they were not able to access the presets like I just showed you. Apparently they were not installed in the correct directory. Others report that this plugin is not able to function without an online connection for license verification. I mean, it's relatively common to need an internet connection when you install the plugin and then install the license. But apparently this plugin always needs an internet connection when you use it. I believe Taylor has replied to that user that that's one of the first things that they would let the developer solve. But still, it might be an issue for you. I'm always online, but for some they have their studio PC completely disconnected from the internet. Now another thing which I would appreciate myself is a manual. The controls are relatively straightforward, but still some explanation would be nice. 
And what I also noticed that the graphics on the plugin are sometimes, well, a little bit wonky. I feel, for example, that the field that is showing the value of a certain control is pretty small compared to the rest of the text on the plugin. But hey, maybe it's a style thing. Now, what I also noticed is that they did quite a big marketing campaign when they first introduced the plugin. First as a black box, then with a discount for pre-order. And it was released on June 1st. But after June 1st, I have not seen a lot of marketing around this plugin. So maybe they're realizing at Taylor that there's still a few things to fix on this plugin before they shout it out to all the world that they have a new plugin. So what's my conclusion after all of this? Yeah, I'm a little torn because I really, really like the sound of this plugin. I think it holds with some of my other favorite plugins and the fact that it takes so little performance is really a benefit and it allows me to have a lot of different reverbs in a project if I need it. I also think that the reverb sound really becomes part of the original track, especially on the more subtle ambient reverbs. You can really hear, for example, that the guitar moves from right in your face to just a little bit back. Not obviously containing a lot of reverb, but it just moves back in space. And I think that's a great thing to have from a reverb. Now, to me, it's also a benefit that there's not a lot of detailed controls and you can dial in the sound pretty quickly by just using these few controls. Yeah, I already said that I don't know how well it resembles the hardware because I don't have the hardware, but I'm sure there will be other videos which will compare the plugin to the hardware. So I'm really curious about that. Go YC Studios. Yeah, as for the problems, I don't know what happened. Obviously, Taylor is usually a hardware manufacturer making very nice hardware effects, among which a reverb that this is based on. So it was their first plugin. And we've seen this with kit plugins as well, for example, where their first plugin had quite a few problems that needed to be ironed out, but they got there in the end. Maybe Taylor asked the guys who made the software for their hardware box to also make a plugin of it. Maybe they didn't have experience with making plugins for Windows and Mac in VST format and all the other plugin formats. It's just speculation, but I can imagine things like that happening. When you go from producing hardware to providing a plugin suddenly. Yeah, as far as buying the plugin goes, well, it's up to you, of course, whether you want to take the risk or just wait until most of the problems have been taken care of, which I'm sure they will. I've linked the thread of the Gearspace forum in the description below so you can check out what news there is about the plugin and what other problems users are experiencing with this on their respective platform. Now, if you like reverb plugins like I do, then you should really check out this video, which talks about the Quantum Evolution reverb which is also a very nice reverb that I also showed in this video. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.